I know some people say speak one language on one day, one language on another day, one person speak one, one person speak another. I don't think it has to be that strict or that serious. I think as long as you're making the effort to use both languages in daily life, then that should be good enough for them to start picking it up. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. If you're already subscribed, thank you so, so much. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my top tips for helping your toddler to start talking. So you guys saw the video with Amelia saying all different words in both English and Vietnamese, starting to put words together to make sentences, and she is only 22 months old. And I got a lot of comments, a lot of questions, DMs on Instagram saying, hey, how did you get her to start talking? My kid is this old and he's still not talking or you know, people just wanted to know how we did it. And so I'm going to be giving you all of the tips that I have in this video today, which it's not a lot, but it's definitely things that were really helpful for us in getting Amelia to be confident and to start speaking more. So just as a reminder, all kids develop at their own rate. And so if you're comparing your child to somebody else's child, you may be disappointed in their development. And so I don't want that to happen. I want you to look at your child and when you go to bed at night, just think, I did my best in helping my child to develop today. That's it. So it doesn't matter if they're early or late. It just, all that matters is that you are there for them. You're helping them in any way that you can. And you feel like you did what you could, you know? Because you can't do more than what you can do, <laughs> if that makes sense. There's only so much you can do, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna just jump right in. I'm gonna share a couple tips on how we got her to start actually talking and then talk a little bit about the bilingual at the end of this video. So stay tuned for the whole thing so you don't miss any of these great tips and tricks. So the very first thing that I am convinced got Amelia talking is not just reading, but the way we read her books. So I read a lot about um, making sure you always read to your kids. So I have always been reading to her since she was really small um, and it's just a good activity and she absolutely loves reading. We don't do screen time. So I think that also helps with her development because she's not just zoning out to a screen. Um, we are really engaged and I talk to her all the time. As you guys can see through the videos, I'm just like nonstop talking when I'm hanging out with her. But the book tip I have for you, this is one of her favorite books. It's called Dream Big Little One. And so what we have done is the books that she knows because we've read them so many times, what I started doing around 20 months, and this is when she started really talking. So that's why I'm convinced this tip was the best is when you read it, Dream Big Little One, there's so much you can do. Just look at all the leaders who came before you. You can read the whole thing, right? But if your kid knows the book, don't read the whole thing. So start like just dropping a word. So for example, dream big little, and then they will start to say what the word is. They'll fill in the blank. So you just have to make sure you're pausing long enough to give them the opportunity to say the word. And then if they don't say it, you can say it and just keep moving on. Don't pressure them to say it or be like, you have to say it. Just like give them a chance and then move on. Don't put too much pressure. But that is how we really got Amelia talking. So I'm gonna try and insert a clip of her actually doing this so you can see how awesome it is. Like, I don't even need the book. Sometimes I'll just start reciting the book and she will just chime in here and there. So we kind of do that as a game. And so I think that is definitely the tip that helped us the most in getting her to start talking because she really wasn't saying anything until 20 months. She was just saying a few words randomly, but she wasn't communicating. She was using her sign language, which is still a form of language and communication. And I knew because she's learning two languages that she would likely speak later. So I wasn't too stressed about it, but it's like a switch turned on and, and she just started talking a lot more. So that is my first tip. I have a small list of things to look for. We are planning to have a picnic surprise for Owl who's traveling here from far away. Guys. Guys. My second tip is to encourage them to speak to you when they want something. So it's almost like bribing them because they can't really get what they want until they say it, but not, not completely. Like I wouldn't pressure her if, if she can't say it or she doesn't know what to say, 
I'm not gonna be like, oh, well, you can't have this water because you're not saying water. No, I wouldn't do that. But for example, the other day she wanted a toy in the toy closet. So she came over to me and she was just like, uh, 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 you know, like just making noises and, and reaching. And I said, okay, can you say, pick me up, please? And then she just said like, pick me, please. Perfect, picked her up, helped her choose her toy and we moved on. If she does not, so like first, I guess I should rewind. I usually first I'll say, can you use your words, please? See if she knows what to say or if she can say it by herself without prompting. If she doesn't say anything, then I tell her like, pick me up please. And then she usually will repeat it, not perfectly, but she will repeat it. And then I will give her whatever it is that she was requesting. So I think that that has helped a lot as well because it gives her the chance to talk. But then if she doesn't know, we teach her what she should say and it works out pretty well. So that's tip number two is to encourage them to use their words and when they don't know, just prompt them. Tip number three is to make sure to repeat keywords. So keywords is like more like a new word that they've never heard before. So for example, if we are playing with Peanut and I wanna teach her that the dog has fur, not hair, right? And so I would say fur like 10 different times in 10 different sentences. Like I would just keep every sentence I would say would be a different sentence with the word fur. So for example, I'd be like, oh, can you touch his fur? Isn't his fur soft? Can you pet his fur? Oh no, his fur fell off. What color is his fur? His fur is brown. And so it sounds kind of silly, but if you can just like repeat the key word with multiple sentences in a row, speak clearly and show like hand motions and, and direct their attention. I think that's a good way to teach new words because if you're just like not exposing them to new vocabulary, I, I mean, they will learn based on listening to you, but I think it's also good to be mindful about like even just small interactions like that. Like you could have just be like, oh, where's the dog? And that's it. Like, they, yeah, they will learn dog, but I think it's nice to take it a step further and just expand the vocabulary whenever you can. So the last point I want to talk about is just the whole bilingual thing, <laughs> thing, because Amelia is bilingual. She speaks English and Vietnamese. And the reason that we're able to do that is because we speak both languages at home. So if you want to have a bilingual baby, you need to speak both languages at home. There are different techniques you can do. I've heard of this thing called OPAL, which is one parent, one language. I don't do that. I actually like to learn Vietnamese with her. So I will kind of use Vietnamese. I would say I speak 30% Vietnamese, 70% English. Hui speaks probably like at least 60, maybe 70% Vietnamese with her and then 30 to 40% English. And grandma, my mother-in-law who lives with us, she only speaks Vietnamese. So it's 100% Vietnamese for Amelia whenever she is around grandma. So that is excellent because I wouldn't be able to do that if it was just me raising her and my mother-in-law hadn't come here. I'm not sure her Vietnamese would be where it is right now because she is excellent at Vietnamese. You guys have seen her talk. And so I think that if you want a bilingual child, you just have to speak both languages at home. Try to be consistent with it. Don't worry about having structure or anything like that. I know some people say speak one language on one day, one language on another day. One person speak one, one person speak another. I don't think it has to be that strict or that serious. I think as long as you're making the effort to use both languages in daily life, then that should be good enough for them to start picking it up because at this age, they're literal sponges. Anything you say, they're gonna repeat. <laughs> I have to be careful now because sometimes I don't say very nice things and, and she repeats them. But that's just my tip for bilingual babies. So if you are really passionate about your child learning both languages, if you don't speak the language, you gotta learn it too. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, cause like I could just speak English to her, but I think it helps that we all speak a little bit of both, I guess. So it's just a very interesting experience. And so far I've been extremely impressed with how quickly she has learned things. So 
I'm just glad to share our experience and you guys have seen her developing since birth so it's really special that you guys can literally see her grow before your eyes and see all of the developments that are happening like three months ago she was not talking and now she's always talking <laughs> so I'm really proud of her I feel good and I'm just hoping that these tips will be helpful for you if you are struggling or you're worried about your toddler. Of course, please, please, please reach out to your pediatrician if you do have any concerns about the development of your toddler or your baby because they're going to be the ones that can refer you to specialists if you need or, you know, maybe you're worried but they'll say that it's normal. A lot of the time, the things that we worry about as moms are actually fine and normal. Timelines vary so much with each child, so we just have to try and stay calm. Not easy as a mom, I know. Stay calm, try your best, and at the end of the day, know that whatever you did throughout the day with your child was the best that you could do, and just be proud of the small wins and accomplishments that you see in your child every day. So I hope this video was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video and welcome to another 12 days of giveaways. Today's giveaway is another play kit from Love Every. So if you missed the first one, this is your chance to win again. There will also be one more later in the month. So definitely keep watching our vlogs during Vlogmas so you get all the chances possible to win so i'm going to be choosing a winner based on comments so definitely leave a comment down below tell me who you want to win a love every play kit for and that's basically it you just have to be subscribed and optional follow love every on youtube and instagram so i will be choosing a winner in two days time i will announce it on the community tab and so this giveaway is open to us and canada only so good luck to everybody entering and thank you again for watching this video